Bend the knee. Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Don Willie coming at you with another No Frills review. Game of Thrones Season 5, Episode 8, Hard Home. You know, and this one I'm kind of doing my uh, semi-transparent White Walker state. Because we got the White Walkers. Oh, boy. This one is all spoilers. You know, if you haven't read the title, if you haven't seen the episode, you should not be watching this one here. So before we get to what is probably going to go down as one of the most classic scenes in all of television history, uh, let's start off in Essos. So, you know, we get Tyrion, Jorah, and Daenerys finally having a meeting. Uh, Jorah is not allowed to speak. Daenerys does not want to hear what he has to say in the least bit. Tyrion does some finagling that actually keeps Jorah alive. But unfortunately, Jorah is back to being Captain Friendzone. In fact, I think he might have been promoted to, you know, um general friend zone at this particular point because this is the second time he's been tossed out of there and um you know he looks he sees the grayscale is uh spread a little bit more than when he first started and you know he goes back to Yezin to say hey look you know what just put me in the fighting pits you know who knows how much money you could sell me for if I actually win. You know, or you can keep me, whatever, just, you know, let me go and fight in front of the queen, right? So we get Tyrion and Danny having their, you know, their little session in terms of just hashing things out and Tyrion telling her what she needs to know if she decides that she wants to actually go to Westeros, right? Because until now, Danny has been so focused on Slaver's Bay that the prospect of her going to Westeros seemed almost uh, almost null and void to a certain extent, right? You know, but now, finally, it looks like there might be a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but, you know, for those of you who read the books, we know things get kind of complicated. So... We'll have to see where this goes. You know, um, this is a change from the book and a welcome one because I've been wanting to see Tyrion actually kind of uh, verbally spar with Daenerys because not too many people are willing to tell her what she needs to hear. Too many people are telling her, either trying to manipulate her or telling her what they want to hear because they're too afraid that she might uh, throw them in a dragon pit or something like that. So, moving, you know, further west, but still on Essos, we got Arya, who is now going by the alias of Lena. Uh, you know, instead of Cat of the Canals, I wish they would have actually kept that, but they did give us a nice little Easter egg with the cat um, running by as she's selling her uh, clams and oysters and cockles. Or whatever, I'm not sure what the hell cockles are, but, you know, whatever. Um, she's finally learning to play the game of faces, and there's only one time where she gets hit by Jack and Hagar, and, um, this was a cool scene, because now you see the progression of Arya, and she's given a mission to learn about a particular person who's an insurance salesman, but unfortunately, the way that he um, does his insurance, he is is kind of, you know, tricking, well, not tricking people, but he's betting on people losing, so this way he doesn't have to really pay out as much money uh, as he would if they didn't die. So, you know, now her mission is to find out all she can about this man and kill him. And we have, you know, the other little girl, the Waith, there who um 
tells Jack and Hogar that, you know, she questions whether or not Arya is ready. And Jack is like, hey, look, you know, it is what it is to the many faced god. You know, hit up with the kind of with the Ivan Drago, you know, she dies, she dies, right? And so we'll get to see, hopefully, next episode uh, where that leads to. Um, because we definitely got to see uh, how Arya is going to kind of, I guess, slip the poison in, you know, when she goes to sell him some more uh, oysters, you know, or whatever. So, pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, then after that, we go to King's Landing, Cersei. Cersei, Cersei, getting her comeuppance. She still refuses to uh, confess to her sins and her crimes. And, you know, that Septa is coming in with the water. And every time she refuses to confess, bang, hold that. Bang, bang, bang. You know, smacking her around with, with, the, with the ladle with the water in it. Kyburn comes in and basically gives her an update and, you know, informs her that her uncle is back as the hand of the king. Well, not, you know, back as the hand of the king, but he is now the hand of the king. He came back from Castle Rock and he basically was like, yeah, fuck you, Cersei. You know, you should have let me be hand of the king before when I told you, but you decided you wouldn't be queen. Now, look at you. So, oh, man, oh, man. So, Tommen is too damn distraught to come to Cersei's rescue. And Cersei is now understanding that, you know, because she's been doing all of this because of that prophecy that Maggie the Frog gave her. But now she's understanding that the prophecy is, is starting to become true because of her and not in spite of her actions, or, you know, uh, yeah, so, you know, now she's sitting there trying to weigh her options, and Kyburn is kind of telling her, look, you know, if you just confess, and she's like, no, I made the High Sparrow, I gave him all the power, and now, you know, he wants me to come and, and kneel before him, and, and, you know, do all this, no, nah, not gonna happen, so, Cersei defiant to the end, and then when the scepter comes in and pours the water on the uh, on the floor, you know, uh, and just leaves, I was I was sitting there waiting like, she gonna do it, she gonna do it. And then when she bent over, I was like, yes, drink the damn water off the floor. That's what the fuck you deserve. Drink it off the floor, damn it. Ah, <laughs> uh, never mind me. I'm having too much fun with that one. Uh, so she's at. She's at the, you know, lowest depths of despair. She actually asked about Jamie, and Jamie has not sent any word. So uh, I imagine that she has no idea that Jamie has been captured by the Martells and is currently uh, a prisoner in Dorne. So we'll see how that plays out, you know, um, with that one. Um, let's see, next up, moving further up north, we go to Winterfell. And, you know, we don't get uh, big scenes with Winterfell, but finally, we have Sansa with Stare of Death when Theon shows up, or, I'm sorry, when Reek shows up to uh, serve her food, you know, to, man, if looks could kill, Reek would have been dead on sight. So, you know, she asked him why he betrayed her, you know, she's like, look, you know, you betrayed the whole family. We were your family. You know, um, Rob was your brother. Rickon and Bran were your brothers. You killed them. Why did you do that? And finally, he confesses that it wasn't him. But he's so freaked out about it that, you know, that Ramsey is going to find out that he's like, I got to go. I No, I can't. I, I can't stay here. I got to go. So now Sansa uh, finally has a little bit of hope that maybe she can find her brother's and help kind of restore just a little bit of order to to things. So I think this is going to be her 
her um, motivation to make sure that that candle gets lit. You know, she's going to make sure that that damn candle gets lit. She's getting out of there one way or the other, right? Um, then we have a scene with Roos and Ramsey where they are strategizing on how they're going to defeat, defeat Stannis. Now, Roos is like, hey, well, you know what? Look, Winterfell is totally rebuilt now. Um, our defenses are impregnable. We can last for a minimum of six months uh, with them trying to siege. Because you know, we got food, we got provisions, our walls are strong. We're good. Ramsey is like, ah, come on, stop being a wimp, Dad. You know, Father, stop being a damn wimp. Let us take the fight to them. Ramsey's like, what the hell are you talking about, man? They can't march, and neither can we. How the hell do you expect us to beat them? You know, we should just let them starve. The Wanda mutiny, uh, you know, wind up starting the mutiny and overthrow Stannis, and he'll be dead anyway. So. You know, with that, Ramsey says, nah, look, just give me 20 men, I can go up there and cause all kinds of havoc, and we'll be good. So, I'm imagining Roos gives him 20 men, because, you know, what's, what's 20 men, and besides, if Ramsey winds up failing, it doesn't, um, it doesn't tank the entire operation, and plus, you know, Fat Wald is pregnant, he's got a, another heir on the way if Ramsey happens to fall, so... Okay, sure, you go out there and do your thing. All right, kid? Finally, we go to, well, not finally, but we go to the wall. <clears throat> we see Sam and Gilly, you know, um, talking over the events that had transpired previously and Sam trying to make sure that Gilly is okay. But, you know, Gilly is more concerned about Sam because, you know, Gilly's coming from from Crasters, I'm pretty sure she's been through worse than what happened with those two guys from the Night's nice Watch. So, you know, for her, yeah, this is cakewalk, you know, as opposed to Sam, who is not adept to handling violence in such a manner. You know, even though he did kill a White Walker in the Thin, he's, he's not a warrior. You know, he's an administrator and you know, he almost got his ass killed if it wasn't for ghosts. So, finally, Ali comes in. He wants to talk with Sam alone. And Ali is asking again, like, why the hell is John doing this? John knows how people feel about the wildlings. You know, and Sam is trying to explain to him, like, look, man, you know, unfortunately. Like, I know how you feel, but this is bigger than your feelings right now. And you can tell Ali just, um, Ali just isn't trying to hear it, you know. He's just kind of like, all right, whatever, man, you know. John is damn near a traitor. You're damn near a traitor. You know, you got this wildling chick up here, and John wants to bring a ton of these damn wildlings back to the wall. So, yeah, screw all you guys, you know. No, he didn't say it, but that was a look on his face when he was leaving. Uh, <clears throat> and finally, 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 we get to uh, the masterpiece, uh, the P.S. The Resistance of the show. And that is Hard Home. So we see John, Tormund, Dolores Ed, a few of the Wildlings, a few of the Night's Watch, Row up to hard home, you know, and everybody's looking at him like, what the hell is going on here? We get Rattle Shirt back for the first time since season two. And, um, you know, he's like, oh, last time I saw you, this guy, Jon Snow, was your prisoner. Now you're his prisoner. What the hell's going on? And, you know, Jon is like, look, he's not my prisoner. We're, we're allies. And, you know, all of a sudden, you know, things start to start to kind of, you know, get a little tense. And so John, you know, not John, but Tormund is like, look, you know, we need to talk this out because they actually came here to help us. You know, Lord of Bones doesn't want to hear it. He starts insulting Tormund and 
was not the right thing to do. Tormund beats him to death with his own mace. Um, and then, you know, they have a nice little conference. Uh, John's telling him, look, you know, we already know what the deal is with the White Walkers. Uh, I'm not trying to have any of you die, you know, and then wind up being part of their army. So, come south. You know, if you promise to fight with us, we'll give you land and all that. And some wildlings go for it. The Thens, being the damn Thens, are like, nah, to hell with this. You know, you're our enemy. You've always been our enemy. We don't give a damn about your dragon glass that you brought up here or whatever. And so <clears throat> it seems a short time later, you know, I'm I'm going to say, you know, probably a couple of hours after them ferrying, uh, wildlings back and forth, you know, to, to the ships that Senna's provided, um, the White Walkers show up and things go to hell. You know, they close the gates at Hardhome because, uh, there's like this kind of avalanche, but it's not really an avalanche. It's just like snow that's just kind of pouring down and this kind of cascade effect. And, you know, all the wildlings who were stuck on the other side of the fort are, you know, they're all screaming, you know, let us in, let us in. And they locked them out. Next thing you know, you know, whatever small army that that the White Walkers might have shown up with just ballooned out of control. So, <clears throat> you know, you have... An epic battle scene, and we start to learn things about how the White Walkers operate. You know, you have the White Walkers, which can basically reanimate any dead corpse, uh, almost no matter what state that they're in, because we see many of them in various states of decay. Uh, those who have, you know, been dead possibly hundreds and thousands of years to those who may have died in the past few months, to those who just got killed right then and there, right? So, you know, we get the epic scene of the giant who's breaking out of the tent where they had the conference, and he's taking a bunch of, you know, uh, the whites and ripping them apart, stomping them and tossing them everywhere, and just, you know, it was kind of a, almost an incredible Hulk moment for the show. And... The one thing that kind of got me shook a little bit is I thought Dolores Ed was a goner because he was inside that same tent with the dragon glass. And when John and the one, uh, one thing, I forgot what the dude's name was, but when they went to go look for the dragon glass, we don't see Dolores Ed. And I'm like, oh man, please don't tell me they killed Ed. Please don't tell me they killed Ed. But, uh, you know, he's still alive. But the crazy, the craziest thing is when we see the Night's King uh, take hundreds of whites, have them all just fall off a cliff. It's like hundreds of them just, you know, just, just a, a damn wave. And then a couple of seconds later, they're all up and they're ready to go. And I mean, the first thing I thought when I saw that was like, yo, he did not have all of them jump off a cliff for nothing. Damn it, John, why are you and Ed still there? Run! So finally, we get the new three musketeers, John, Ed, and Tormund, with, uh, you know, with their giant sidekick, 1-1, one, one, making a break for the docks. So... You know, you got these guys, they finally get to the docks, uh, and they're trying to roll away, and the Night's King, it seems, now I could be wrong about this, and I know a lot of people have pointed it out, but it seems as though uh, he was kind of kicking up the wind that, you know, so much that it might have either prevented them from, from uh, you know, really rowing the boat to to the bigger ships, either that or they were just kind of mesmerized by what the hell was happening. Uh, and, and then, in just kind of the most, you know, one of the most badass scenes, Nice King just holds up his arms, you know, 
in the, in the damn gladiator stance. <laughs> just like, it stands there. And just him and John have the staring match for a sec there. And all of the people who had been slaughtered. I mean, like, I'm talking about literally a couple of seconds before this event. The body might have just dropped to the floor. He raises his hands and just kind of looks at John and he's just like, and you just see all of them rise up looking like something out of Thriller or, or I don't, I don't even know, but it was just, you know, the look on John's face, like, holy shit, we are fucked. We are all fucked right now. Um, it was just priceless. That was, that was, you know, one of the most epic uh, scenes, and I mean, that would, you know, and that whole sequence went on for like the last 15 or 20 minutes of the episode, so that was, you know, that was absolutely amazing, and I do hope that the next two episodes either stay to this level or even take it up a notch. You know, episode nine is normally where we get the big, uh, you know, whatever it's going to be, and, you know, episodes 9 and 10 last year were pretty big, but, um, it seems that they saw, <laughs> they decided they wanted to start a little bit early this year, so, um, it's, it's going to be, uh, kind of crazy, you know, this one I would have to give perfect 10 out of 10 score for this particular episode, and again, I hope that they keep up the, the level of excellence that they displayed here. So, um, yeah, with that said, you already know the deal. Rate, comment, subscribe, share, tell your friends. Are you not entertained? That's been my time. Don Willie, I'm out. <laughs>